We're off to the hinterland between Noosa and Budderham in Queensland, the home of Australian ginger and stunning ocean views on dining down under. Welcome to this episode of Dining Down Under. I'm Vic Cherikoff. Benjamin Christie. And Mark McCluskey. And we're cooking dishes inspired from Noosa. It's up on the Queensland coast. We actually start out in the hinterland where we're growing pineapples and ginger. We're visiting the ginger factory there as well at the township of Budderham. And uh, then moving across to the coast to Bistro Sea and looking at some of the dishes that are prepared there. So our interpretations of this Noosa visit encompass what? Benjamin, what are you up to? I'm doing our interpretation of a Vietnamese salad with prawns and vermicelli noodles. Okay, okay, that's, yep, beautiful. Marcus. Well, actually, Vic, I'm doing a Yarra Valley salmon. With the salmon, I'm going to be using some, some of the ginger from, uh, from that region. Also, pepperberries, native pepperberries. I'm going to create an interesting dressing with that, pepperberry dressing. Um, some snow peas, shiitake mushrooms, some dried pepperberry and a few other ingredients. Ginger and shallots work well together with fish, as, and as you well know. And the berry for all the aromatics and the zinc. That's going to be an interesting dish to finish with. We've got dessert here, and uh, my dessert's going to be, again, pineapple, enhanced with ginger, a little bit of chilli as well, so that the, the, uh, the ginger's just going to put that little piquancy and really complement <coughs> the chilli-ginger mix using macadamia nuts. Now, don't forget also that macadamia nuts actually replaced the um, pineapple when it was first planted up in Hawaii. So there's a little bit of a relationship there between the macadamia and the um, pineapple that we're using as well. So before we go there, have a look at this little segment on our trip to Noosa and uh, we'll be back cooking on Dining Down Under. We travel to the subtropical township of Budderham in Queensland, which is the home of Australian ginger and the centre of ginger processing. This new growth is harvested for all the candied products. Pickled ginger as well, sweet, low fibre, no sulphurous flavour like other gingers in other parts of the world. Australian ginger is used in sauces, great for cooking, for embellishing flavours and enhancing flavours, but good for syrups, pickling as I said, jams, goes on and on, biscuits. Ginger is probably used in about 55% of Chinese medicines for its fortifying and health building characteristics. So let's see what we can do with this in the kitchen. The food's so good here at Bistro C that a few of the locals are a little rigid about leaving. Please excuse the chef if he looks a bit shaky, but he had a motorcycle accident only half an hour before we filmed him, and he did get a little bit scuffed up. The dish we're going to see is a Thai-style whole fish, ginger stuffed and baked in a way to look as though the fish is still swimming when it's served. Once it's fully cooked, it's set on a salad of snow pea sprouts, coriander and finely sliced vegetables dressed with a fresh crushed ginger, Thai, basil and lime juice mix, then contrasted with a mango dressing. The plate gets a garnish of chilli and black sesame seeds and it's done. The prawn salad starter is a mixture of avocado, coriander, sprouts and a pink pickled ginger which comes from the next town of Budderham. It gives the dish a sweet yet aromatic character. A 
squeeze of tropical sour lime finishes the salad. Which is then packed in a mould for height. A herbaceous sauce of tomato and chilli gives a contrast of colour and flavour and the dish is finished with the shelled and deveined prawns or shrimp which are twisted together for that visual appeal. Ginger poached peaches are on for dessert adding pungency and interest to these plump fruits. Some lemongrass and chilli for the sugar syrup takes the Thai twist right to the end of the meal. To complete the dessert we have a wattle seed panna cotta with almond bread for some texture. Add the peaches and syrup and finish along with some finely sliced mint leaf. Our chef at Bistro C really impressed us with how he used the butter and ginger we brought. Talk about from the paddock to the plate and then whiling away a few hours on a balmy night by the ocean with great food and good company was not hard to take either. Still, someone has to do it. You know when you're out in a, one of those really busy restaurants and a waiter just won't open your wine? Well, I'm going to show you an interesting way of opening it. We've all been in that situation. What we do is we push the cork in Oh, there we go. And the wine goes all over you. A bit of aftershave, as I like to call it. So what we do is we Was push it... to happen? No, Mad. No. <laughs> wasn't really supposed to. So what we do is we push this uh, piece of string in. Which you always carry on you as you go to restaurants. I always have a piece of string in my back pocket or holding my pants up or something. Well, fair enough. I can't really do this at the table, huh? They say that about Australians. A little bit of fencing wire and you'll uh, keep the show on the road. Keep the show on the road. It's not happening at the moment, mate, but I'm, I'll keep going, hey? There we go, so we push the string right down there. Keep going, come on mate, please work for me. This is television. Oh, it's not gonna work, so we'll just push that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Yes, swiftly. And we're gonna add some pepper berries into the blender. So that'd be something you'd practice at home, is that right? Yeah, I think I might uh, practice that before we do that again. And uh, some pepper berries in the blender. We're gonna have some of the sweet soy. The sweet soy has a really interesting flavor. It but it's sweetened with palm sugar, which is the uh, really, it's a, it's a mellow sweetness. It's not like a harsh cane sugar sweetness. That's correct. And we've got some verjus. Mm, 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 mm. Tip that in there. Which is part of wine or an off it, make of wine, isn't it? It is a wine, mate. It certainly is a wine. It's unfermented white grape juice. So we'll throw that in. A little bit of aniseed myrtle and lemon myrtle mix. And last of all, we'll add some butter and ginger. There we go. And just give this a couple of seconds, it's about all it needs. There we go. And a lovely pepperberry dressing. So as you crunch the seeds from the pepperberry, you're going to get quite a lot of zing. You're going to get a lot of zing and it works really well with the sweetness of the other two flavours. So probably the more you blend it, the hotter it's going to get. The more you blend it, that's, that's right, and yep. the longer it sits as well, Vic. Yep. It's pretty easy to make too. And Ben, what are you up to, mate? Basically, I've got some macadamia nuts for the salad. I'm going to start off by putting these vermicelli noodles, which come in a rice or bean form, uh, at, at most Chinese stores and some supermarkets now have them. So basically, we'll just put them straight into to boiling water and just turn them off because they don't need any cooking. They'll cook through with the, uh, the hot water and that's about it. How long do we stand them? Uh, about four or five minutes, Vic. Oh, that's right? about it. And then just strain them in a really fine strainer. Otherwise, they go straight through. There we go, just slicing the salmon here. I always like to slice the salmon. Some people don't, but I think it really does help the flavour to go into it. It helps with cooking. It does, oh, it does help with the cooking, but yeah, you can get a bit of flavour in there as well, which always does help, mate. So it's going to open up? Open up, yes. It's all right, get out of your way. So we've got a bit of, we've got a bit of ginger in there, we've got a bit of shallot in there. And let's crank my pan up and get it to cooking. It's going to take a little while. Okay, I've just got some chilies now. Cutting the chilies, you don't want to uh, chop these and then uh, put your hands on your face or any other area because it becomes a bit zingy. But you want the zing in your plate, not anywhere else, don't you, Vic? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, let's not go there. So, onto the dessert, if I may, just quickly. This is a pretty simple dish with uh, 
pineapple pieces. So pineapple's trimmed fairly, uh, fairly cleanly. Actually, I've left a few little eyes. I'll just take them as well. Otherwise, they can be a little bit fibrous. And pineapple is a really high, high sugar fruit. And you can taste it as it goes along because if it's a little acid, it might be a little bit unripe. In fact, I should have mentioned it. Before you take the top off, in fact, before you pick your pineapple from the, uh, from the store, tug on one of the leaves. And if it comes out easily like that, I'll just show that again. If it comes out with almost no effort, the pineapple's ripe. Well, there you go. I've learned something today. <laughs> Good shopping tip, yeah. A little shopping tip. And it is important, otherwise if you end up with a green pineapple, the sugar's not yet there and uh, you'll end up with um, quite a, a sour, a tart dish. You'll have to add more sugar. And some people also don't react well to unripe pineapple mm. because of the enzymes um, in, the, uh, in, in the pineapple itself. One thing I might do here, Vic, is actually infuse the oil a little bit with some pepper berries. Yep. I think that really does bring out the flavour somewhat. So a little bit of warm oil, throw in some pepper berries. You can mash them. You can, you can. So the heat is in the seed of the pepper berry. And a good substitute for the pepper berry here would be just ordinary black pepper. You could perhaps even use a sumac um, or some of the other um, pepper notes, some of the other aromatic flavours. How long is that going to take to cook? That's going to take at least 12 minutes to cook. OK. Just making the dressing now, lemon aspen dressing. Want to basically put it in the pan, just a little bit of soy sauce for a bit of colour. It's really simple to make. So you're Did using it... lemon aspen syrup again? Again, and just, you know, this, this could even be made in a mortar and pestle if you want to get really chilli flavour. And that's it. But lemon aspen is a fruit. Uh, New style citrus, Vic, is that what you call yep. it? Yep, oh, it's a brand new citrus flavour. It's got um, citrusy notes in terms of lemon lime, but it's not like mandarin or grapefruit or lemon lime. It's a whole new flavour. I'm going to start off on the barbecue today by just lightly toasting the macadamia nuts. Instead of using peanuts, which the Vietnamese usually use, I'm going to use toasted macadamia nuts. So I'm going to marinate the, uh, the prawns, the yamba prawns, or otherwise known as shrimp, uh, with a little bit of soy sauce, just a smidgen of olive oil. Just toss that round a little bit. And we'll put those straight on the barbie. Now they don't take that long to cook, probably about two or three minutes. And you want to cook them about three quarters of the way that you normally do them and, and let them finish off with the heat. So, as you can see, they're starting to, to color up already. Okay. How's the wok going, Mark? Mate, it's coming along nicely. It's just starting to heat up there. What I might do to start off with is grab the salmon and put it in the oven. We're going to put it in the oven for about, let's say about eight minutes now at 160 degrees C. Or gas mark three. So we'll put that in the oven. Move, moving back over to the wok, we're going to start cooking away. Adding a bit of oil. We should really be using a high temperature oil. I'm using olive oil which burns at quite a low temperature. As you can see there's a bit of smoke coming off but I really do enjoy the flavour. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll start off with a few mushrooms. These are shimichi mushrooms. Break them in there. They're one of my favourites. They've got a really good flavour, particularly with butter. Oh mate, you can't <laughs> beat it can you? A bit of lemon myrtle as well. True. A few shiitakes in there. And even flavours like, um, well, aniseed myrtle, um, star anise, or even Egyptian aniseed with mushrooms oh, complement them beautifully. It is pretty good. So we've got the mushrooms sodaing away there nicely. We're going to add a few of the snow peas. There we go. A few shallots. A few bean sprouts. Cook that in. Great to see a good uh, Asian maestro at work throwing woks around, tossing food. Great way of cooking. It certainly is, Vic. And we're going to add, for a little bit of aromatics, rainforest rub. With the rainforest rub, 
we've got some lemon myrtle, we've got some aniseed lemon aspen. It's a, ch a vegetable chicken based stock, I believe. Yep, yep. With some macadamia nuts. It's a flavour we've put together for, um, well, yeah, for vegetables, for chicken, for fish, for literally, it's, a, it's an all purpose seasoning. And going to the other end of the scale, it works really well with fish and chips. <laughs> okay. There we go, so that's coming along nicely. So you're actually going to be toasting the macadamia nuts that are in the uh, rainforest rub as well. That's right, mate. And what I'll do is I'll just pour my dressing into this. And we'll have a bit of a taste of that, so would you reckon? how's that going there? You're right, yep. Yes, coming along nicely. Have a taste of this, Vic. See what you think, mate. One of my little inventions. Thank you. Now, just wait. <laughs> I know for a fact that you can't taste wasabi one iota. If his face goes red, worry. Oh, no, that's beautiful. Spot on? Mm, that is great. Need a squeeze of lime juice or it's good as it is? Mate, that is as good as it is. Excellent. So what are you doing over here, mate? We've got... Um, the pineapple slices are already um, glazed. Actually, now the pepper berry is starting to really work. It's, uh, it's very nice. And so with a little bit of food, um, the pepper berry flavour is going to mellow out. So here I've already got a little bit of chilli. Uh, the ginger has comp will complement the, um, the pineapple nicely. Possible also to maybe add a little bit of um, mountain pepper as a flavouring as well. And the pepper flavour here, mountain pepper also works really well with fruits like peaches, with pears and pineapple as well, because it works as a natural fruit enhancer. That's so interesting. It's, so it's got a bushy, it's got a bit of a hit, a bit of a spicy it's got hit a, as well. A bushy flavour is probably a good way, or, or a woodland flavour for our American friends. Um, and that will complement, and again, add a little bit of piquancy, a little bit of zing to the... Um, uh, to the uh, pineapple slices there. So that's a simple dish as is and uh, we'll just finish off with some macadamia nuts. We could taste that, check the sweetness if the pineapple... Can I have a bit of a taste there, mate? Dip away, mate. It's uh, Looks cool very lot. appealing. Oh, yeah, the mounting pepper really does come through. Work it. Mm, okay. And the chilli. A bit of a hit there. Got it? Mm. So we're trying to add complexity to even dessert so the desserts aren't just a simple concoction of sweet and fat, which is fairly typical with a lot of desserts. Here we're adding aromatics, pungents, and uh, again, balancing sweetness, sourness or tartness uh, with all those flavours as well. And this would be particularly good with a, little, with a cup of coffee to put a bit of bitterness in it when we finally serve and plate up. Benjamin? Prawns are done. Macadamia is also really nicely toasted. So what we'll be serving today is pan-fried baby salmon with wok tossed vegetables and a pepperberry dressing, the yamba prawns with lemon aspen and chilli dressing served on glass noodles, a little bit of lemon myrtle to finish it, finally the dessert, ginger and brown sugar crusted pineapple. Putting the salad together now, putting all the, just all the components into the bowl, Prawns, barbecued prawns, the yamba, yamba prawns, all the macadamias, a little bit of dressing, and then just give it a big toss. I might just grab my fish out of the oven. Should be about done now, I think. Plate. It's looking good, Benjamin. Looking pretty good, mate. There's fish on the plate now. There we go. So it's all pretty simple cooking. We've got some great colours there. What a plate for that fish. I know, how apt. And a bit of pepperberry dressing around the side. Wipe off the um, mistake. A couple of limes there for a squeeze. And the uh, cracks opened up on the fish to... Uh... You can see that looks terrific. That's right. Infuse the flavours, Vic. Got the flavours through. Great. How are you going, mate? About mate, ready to just eat? Just about there. Yep, about ready to eat. Good stuff. Leave a couple of little tules there. A few macadamia nuts. We've got our visitor already out there waiting for us. Well, let's go, guys. Rachel, have a dessert. Excellent, thank you. Who's sitting where? Oh, look at this, I've got the fish. 
Ben's ginger prawn or shrimp dish, use the citrusy lemon aspen fruits and lemon myrtle leaf to enhance the natural citrus notes you'll find in Australian ginger. And the zing from the ginger was also embellished by the chilli. For substituting ingredients in this recipe, use lime zest and juice and some lemongrass instead of the lemon aspen and lemon myrtle. Mark's whole fish followed a similar flavour approach with lemon myrtle used again, but this time mixed with peppers and chicken stock powder in what I call a rainforest rub. Instead of chilli, Mark complemented the pungency of the ginger with the native Australian pepper berry dressing he made. And there you have it, more winning recipes using Australian grown ginger. So, as always, our recipes are on the website. I'm looking forward to tasting that. That looks sweet. And yet so simple, it just comes together like that. You can do that in your sleep. That's great. Seconds. Yeah, it takes no time at all. And the great thing is you don't have to boil past, you don't have to cook it. Just warm the noodles and it works. Rachel, get into it, have a taste, see what you think. Recipes on the website, I think we've done a great job here because there really is some different international influences here. We've turned international food upside down yet again. Join us next time. Cheers. Thank you.